This is really just our property. It's not affecting any other business. No, it's not. no. The, the, uh, gen the general citizen will not see any difference. We still have, we'll retain all the parking we have up there. There'll be sufficient uh, lane width. Okay. And uh, the, the intersection will still match up. So there's really no impact. I am curious about those three sections of that building. It looks like it's built in three pieces of the neighboring building. Now, is there no foundation under any of that wall? It doesn't appear so. When I was up there looking at it, it didn't look like they had dug under that enough to really tell. Well, we built it back in. Aha. You don't want to get too far. <laughs> well, no, yeah, you, I mean, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank you guys all for coming up here on short notice and, and doing this quickly. Obviously, um, for us, and, and as Mr. Taylor um, said, we're looking at a number of options. This is really the only one that is going to allow us to get open by right now, which is the goal. We had six months leeway built in with the environmental issue. We chewed most of that out. So this is the only way that, it's, you know, that we'll get it done. But uh, last Monday was a kick in another reason on multiple occasions um, with the uh, with the um, uh, the encroachment that uh, Mr. Hall mentioned. We discovered that the building was actually off two inches, um, which isn't something which is something we could have dealt with. But in uh, the period in the, in the uh, during the course of excavating that morning, I got a second call two hours later that hey, wait a minute, there's a real problem here. And there's no uh, foundation underneath that building. And if we dug at all, we were risking the building collapsing forward. There's no support. For so that, that, all. that so digging that they did and discovered that was that. Well, it was just on a small. It was on a corner, but then they, in, the, in the meantime, they've gone and created the collections because we also had to do compaction tests around there to figure out how deep we had to go for our foundation to create support and testing for the compaction of the dirt, the soils that are underneath there. And we, the deeper we have to go, the more that's going to impact the building next door, and um, you know, and, and the bigger potential issue we have, whether it be distance or stays, whatever, as a, as a way of remediating the potential damage to the building next door. Um, that, I mean, I want to actually thank Mr. Taylor when I brought this up. I mean, he's been incredibly helpful in this entire process, and, and really going through a lot of the options with us and working through a lot of this and getting time out there to um, to kind of run through this and make sure that this wasn't something that's going to negatively impact the city and be able to do this at no cost to the city. Um, and it's really something that, as I said, the average lay person is never ever going to know that was even different unless they're measuring from the street sign in the corner and saying, I think there's a little bit of sidewalk, so a little bit moved out there. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, anyway, we, I mean, we did, our, the engineers and everything went through this as, as quickly as they could to try to come up with. Uh, the best way to um, you know, solve this issue. And, and, uh, originally, we were hoping for even five feet, but um, that, that, was, that wasn't feasible. That, that was something that would impact the city. And in this case, um, the, the two feet allows us to get this done and still stay on schedule and um, does not, does not impact the, the city. So. And then in the plans that you have now, will you be able to help your neighboring building have more support? Put in or would they be inside their existing wall? Um, it really shouldn't have any impact. What those staves are going to do is prevent the soils from falling out from underneath that building, so that it's not going to. I uh, actually met with them today and you know, let them know that they're going to need to take care of their inventory inside because that's going to that's going to shake the shake the place up a little bit to knock those in. Um, you know, it's a big. Come here and knock these things in, but we don't want any bottles falling off the wall or anything and creating a mess. And
a bit environmental testing on it today, but that doesn't solve this issue because that's going to be something that's going to take time and more money than we have right now. So, um, but in the long range, um, in fact, on social media, I don't know anything about all this, and of course there's always this on social media, but you know, one of the comments we make consistently is that we were committed to downtown Cedar Springs, and um, this really gives us the potential long range to grow on Main Street and create more uh, attractive and viable retail space on Main Street. So uh, it prevents it. If all this falls into place, and that's a big hit. But you know, it really gives us the potential to have a to improve that Main Street front, number one, and uh, not have to go outside the city to create expansion space for production. So we're excited about the potential there. We try to we try to be reasonable with them before, and that didn't work out. And now they're in a rock and hard spot a little bit, and then they, they come together. So. Well, not enough of a hard spot. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the village's been there for 100 years, yeah. you know, and, and that was one of the things we talked about. Uh, again, Mr. Taylor was very, very helpful in this. Um, you know, when was this built and was what was the codes then? Where was the and was this yeah. even done the way it was supposed to be? But you know, at that time, it was, built, that. Uh, it was built in 19, 1900. So yeah. I guess we're lucky that there's anything. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the oldest car ever since 1900. That's what the assessor I asked him when it was built. He says nothing about it. <laughs> We're going to have historicals when we get the uh, phase one back, but... Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I wanted to ask you, Dave, are you going to be using Cedar Springs water to make your drink? Brewing centers were very much centered on the water, what water you could get. The reason that English beer tastes like it does is because of the water that existed in Burton on Trent. The reason that Munich beer tastes like it does is because of the water and styles that developed were because of the water that existed there. But in the modern world, we can we can take water and treat it. So we can create water out of our water or? No, I, I think I think Tom has a nice big pipe. We're going to hook that up too and turn it right on, and there we go. <laughs> Instead of zero outline, which was the original approval. Okay. 
the entire sidewalk will move 24 inches to the north. Brand new sidewalk and curb. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We just moved two feet off. Yeah. If, you're, if you're real nice in this hall, we can let you come in and break in. for the council. Hearing none. Council comments. How much less than 50 minutes apart? Okay. 